right, so I'm passing the torch over to you, Ryan. Take it away. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll give you a brief introduction. A lot of my experiences in helping people develop websites. Um, we work with all kinds of businesses from small to medium to large. Manuel's experience, he's been developing since he was eight years old. He's now 74. If you don't know, he's actually not 74. <laughs> 174. He's been, he's been developing since he was eight. He's over 40. Um, so we've got a lot of experience between the two of us um, in terms of understanding development and what people need in terms of their websites, what they look like, how they can function and what they do for the consumer. So um, Emmanuel is more the technical guy. He's your, your coder, your developer. I'm more of the sales and marketing and business side of it. So what, what is the industry standard as a developer? If I'm developing a website, what standard should I follow? Do I need yes. to follow the standards? Am I, am I doing it because something has been standardized? Or am I doing it because it's just what, what's been widely adopted by industry? And is it more of an, an ad hoc approach to deploying a website? Or is it more of, I got to follow the standard. This is how, if I'm making a website for industry, this is how it should be built. I mean, is it, is, or is it pretty much, you know, the wild west, do what you want? That's, That's a much more of a Ryan question right there. Yeah, I think, um, you know, what it comes down to is when it comes down to industry, you know, if you're building a website for a company, you have to build it with the consumer in mind and you have to you have to build it within the idea of how are they going to want this to function for them and how is it going to benefit them and how am I going to, you know, create a user interface that is going to, you know, engage my consumer, sell my products, sell my services and you know, grow, grow this company. So I think when it comes to industry standards, I think the industry standards are dictated by consumer interactions with technology. Um, but a lot of people don't understand that they wanna build a website that they think they'd want, but it's not about what they'd want, it's about what the consumer's demanding. So that's, you have to look outside yourself and look at what is the demand out there and how, how do we build technology and websites that fits that demand right now? I think is the, the big thing. So that's a so one of the challenges you're, you you constantly face is that you might have a company that says, "Hey, I got this website. This is what I want it to look like. This is what um, I think it should be." Yeah. But your approach is well, it's not so much about what you want; it's more about what you want it to do. Right. And then that translates into we need to design it this way for this audience. Exactly. Okay. If you look at Amazon, or you look at Facebook, they build based on what people are, maybe they're complaining about. Maybe there's a feature that's lacking and the, the people are out there saying, hey, you could really use this. Now they're building it for that. So customer feedback is always, whether positive or negative, is telling you what is in demand out there and you're morphing your skills and your talents and how you're building things to that demand. So and we just had a call with a, a potential client just before this one. We had the exact same thing. We, they weren't even sure how they wanted their site built for their consumer. So we had to talk about that and figure it out. So that's what it really comes down to, I think, at least in my experience. You need to understand what it is. You have to, when you're designing a website, I mean, we, we discussed all the design processes, right? You know, wireframes, sketch it out, wireframe it. Yes. But even before you start doing that, you have to kind of understand what it is that client is trying to do. And then you got to convince them how to do it the right way based on you know what, what, what their end goal is. Right. So you don't want to pigeonhole yes. yourself and you don't want to restrict yourself into being one of these web developers that kind of hey, I've designed a website this way and it worked great for this person and for this company, so I'm going to just do it for everybody. Right? Yes, that's, it. that's exactly right. That's so, Garrett to, nailed it. That's so yeah, annoying when developers do that. To, you have to be able to adapt. You have to be mm -hmm. flexible. And right. you have to really understand not only what it is your client wants, but what their customers are going to want. 
exactly. So there's a whole breadth of, you know, I, I, if you got, I would, I would recommend this and that because really web, the web today is, is highly commercialized. You know, it's yes. part of it's there for entertainment, but the other part of it is to generate revenue for companies. Right. And very successful business people, at least ones that I know, have some background in psychology. Anybody, anybody in Zoom or anybody in the yes. classroom taking any psych courses? No. So I think these guys, their their focus primarily is, you know, the technical side of things. But if you ever decide you want to go into the business side and understand commercialism and all that. Site courses definitely can help you in that area, but you really need to have to have an idea of what people want, even if they don't know that they want it. You know, it's, that's so exactly it's, right. Yeah, I that's about, brilliant. A little bit of a guessing game, you know. Well, um, to layer to layer on that, uh, people buy based on emotions. So we're finding that technology and human emotions are. Inter intertwined now people get on Facebook because they want to fulfill some sort of you know they want to go out and talk about what they're doing and show show off to their friends or find out I mean it's becoming an emotional thing yes. so when you're developing things you have to understand that you're developing it for, for human emotion you know people buy things based on emotions and needs um, so you really have to keep that in mind when you are a developer as, as weird as it sounds it's not it's not something you shouldn't think about it's very true though I buy, I buy board games and never play them. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I gotta have super emotional. Game. I gotta have it. It's gotta exactly. Be my, it's gotta be my collection. And then it's right. Just there it's, an emo show. it's an emotional thing. People, you want people to consume it. You want to control, not control, but you want to have some um, control out of how it's going to be consumed because there's a purpose behind that consumption. Unlike art, where it's like, I'm going to throw some art up there, and everybody's going to interpret it however they want, because that's the intent of art. But when it comes to web design and designing a website to be consumed, you have to really think about what is the intent of this consumption? How are they going to consume the content that I'm putting up here? And how can I have it adapt to whatever technology is out there, whether it's some browser that they're using, or some device that they're viewing it on. I mean, there's just so much to think about. It, it, it can be a little nerve-wracking, at least from my it's, perspective. I, would, I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. It's not only that, it's also, how are you going to continually engage them with it? If you look at Amazon, Amazon has completely redesigned and redesigned over the last 10, 20 years to make you want to buy more, make it easier to buy more, and make it easier for you to buy more for friends and family and creating lists and all this stuff. So it's continually engaging. So you're not just making them interested once, you're making them interested more and more and more every day. And they're more and more engaged every day. And then they're telling their friends and family, now you've got millions of users. So that's what it comes down to, I think. You're cultivating an addiction of what you're doing. In a way, yeah. You yeah. want them to be addicted to your website. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's true, actually. Yes. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it, you know, I'm just being blunt. I mean, that's that's the underlying yeah. truth with advertising. You know, you're exactly you're trying to convince somebody they need something that they don't need, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Just like when Amazon recommend recommends other products to you based on stuff you've already bought. Like, it's your data they're using. They understand what you bought before, so they're using that data to push more products to you. And that's just the basis of online marketing, you know. Well, here's one from here's one from Alex. What is the best benefit of your jobs? Well, um, I'm still trying to figure that out. Working with Ryan, is <laughs> to say working with Daniel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the best benefit. Uh, I think you know. For me, I can only speak for myself. Um, you know, when you know you're a part of, when you're out there helping others be successful. I think at the end of the day. What you guys got to understand is you get further in life when you help other people get further in life. So whether it's a small business or a big business, no matter what you do, your skills can help them grow and be successful. And I think at the end of the day, that is one of the benefits for me is to see others grow, expand, 
become successful and be happier. So I think that's one of the benefits for me, Manuel. I don't know what, what else it is for you, but. Ryan kind of nailed it right there. Um, my benefit is the creational aspect of it. Um, you guys are all artists, every one of you in the class, all the gals and guys are, are, are artists in your own right. You pretty much um, put a painting out every website or any part of the project that you work on. It, it's like a piece of you that you're putting out to the world. And that's one of the things that makes me grateful. Mm -hmm. Me too. That's yeah, You hit the nail on the head there. Well, for me too, it's, you know, I, I enjoy, and Manuel knows this, I enjoy the creative side. I enjoy coming up with ideas for clients that are unique to them. So, and the reason why businesses succeed usually is because they're unique. There's something they unique they have above their competition. So, um, you know, that's what I like to come up with. All right. Thank you. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye. Take care. EWebJelly.com.